upset about a basketball game or a basketball player, and his children are sitting there like, Dad, why are you so consumed with that guy? Why won't you just come help me with my homework? Mm. Amen? I know I'm not speaking to anybody here. But <laughs> we get so consumed with these assignments that become enrapturing to us. And so we have to understand in the word that there are people like this in our lives, and we have to identify that. I'm not calling anybody out today because, you know what, I have to pull the plank out of my own eye before I pull the, the, the splinter out of yours, amen? Because if, if you start looking at other individuals in that manner, you can't see past your own faults. That becomes a danger. So start evaluating yourself. Am I a Simon in my own life? Have I, have I achieved some kind of success? So I think that I am it. Amen. You have to understand, you have to reevaluate yourself and reevaluate your priorities. Because maybe you have been gifted with certain, uh, certain gifts that other people have, have, have elevated you to that status. We have to understand that as well. Amen. And so we go back to this, this, uh, this passage of scripture. And it's talking about where Simon, uh, there's a man, Philip. He comes in. Like I said, Philip was doing many great things in the land. And he was going and he's preaching Jesus Christ. And he's laying on his hands. It doesn't say that specifically, but he was, you know, doing signs and he was doing miracles. And they were following after Philip in this time. And, and the people are being, uh, they're being saved because of the work that Philip is doing in this land. And it's exciting. People get word of it back home. They're like, wow, Philip's doing a great job. You know, Philip is out there. He's he is, he's doing wonderful things for God. And even Simon, if you understand that, I, I, I can't really read too much more into Simon, but if, if you look at Simon, he's sitting back and he's looking at this Philip guy. And Philip comes in and people are being turned over to, to Jesus Christ because of the works that Philip doing. Simon, all of a sudden, he says, you know what? There might be something to this. There might be something to this. So guess what? He has a change of mind. He has a change of heart. That's what the Bible says. That he started to believe. And he started to see all the things that Philip was doing. He started, the, the Bible says he, he wandered. He, he just wandered at it. Like, wow. All these things that this guy is doing. I, I, I want to get a part of this, too. So he jumps on board. He says, I want, to be, I want to be a believer. I want to be a Christian as well, too. So he decides to jump on board. Amen. And so looking at that passage of scripture, we, we understand. We, we look and say, hey, man, that's great. That's amazing. How, how awesome that Simon, he was doing all these things. He was, you know, doing the witchcraft and the sorcery. And he decides he doesn't want to do that anymore. He wants to go follow after Jesus. That's exciting, isn't it? I think anybody that's a believer believes that that's exciting to see something like that happen. But what ends up happening, we have to understand that what is your motivation of your heart when you decide to change your heart? Because if you never change your motivation, is your salvation truly real? I'm not, to, I'm not the one to judge. Only God can judge that. But we do have to make sure that we're examining ourselves. That's right. Because we will have other individuals that come into the church body. And, and this, is, this is why I believe this is a very timely world, word. Because in this world today, there are instances, there are situations that are occurring where it's turning the people's hearts over to Jesus Christ. There are things that are occurring in this life that I think people are starting to get an awakening. They're starting to have an understanding that, you know what, there's more to this thing than me. There's more to, 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 to this life than just doing what I do. There, there's, there's, more to, uh, there's more to this thing. There's, there's more to this life than just being my own man and going out and just making money. There's more. There's a cause. There's a, there's a purpose in this life that we have to, that, that, that I haven't fulfilled yet. And so I spoke several, several weeks back. I uh, can't remember, but the last message I spoke about was forgiveness. And if you remember, I talked about the soldiers and the troops coming home as well, too. There will be people like that, people that come back home. They have not had uh, exposure to Jesus Christ. Uh, they left home maybe at a very early age. They went overseas. 
Uh, they experienced a lot of uh, very graphic things, very hurtful things that they were able to, that they did experience. And now they're going to come back over here. And they're going to be looking for something to fill the void in their lives. Something to fill the, the emptiness that they felt. When they were over there, they were fighting for a cause. But when they get over here, what they realize is, what's the cause to fight? I can't go out and just kill somebody. I have to go and earn a living. I have to go and, and do something besides what I was doing over there. And so when people come over, and, and, and I think the world is changing in that manner, and I believe that there are going to be a lot of conversions by athletes. There's going to be a lot of conversions by people that are in the music business, whether it's rap, R&B, uh, soul, uh, country. There will be a lot of people that convert over to Christianity. Amen? If you don't believe it, I believe it. I know. I see the signs of it happening already. Amen? So there will be people that want to, to jump over and they say, hey, there might be something to this Christian thing. But what is the purpose? Why are they going over to the, the Christian thing? Why, why are they deciding to become Christians all of a sudden? Why are they deciding that, you know what? That was fine over there, but you know what? I, I had all the money I wanted. I had all the influence that I wanted. I had all the, 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 you know, I got the best seats in the house. I got everything that I possibly ever wanted. But where, what's over here? What's, what's attracted me to this life of being a Christian? And I am going to argue today that there are a lot of entrapments in the kingdom of God. A lot. Because I think in this time, like none other, we have seen the church rise to a level of prosperity where churches are able to have uh, meetings or individuals that are coming to profess Jesus Christ, they're able to have meetings in large arenas, like they can sell out Madison Square Garden. They can go to any city, any state, they can draw a million people very easily by just saying, I will be here, people will come. They can go to any ball game, any uh, event, and people will recognize them as, hey, that's that singer, preacher. There are going to be people that convert over to Christianity simply because of the silvery looking shiny entrapments. Like Simon, he was entrapped by the miracles that were occurring at that time. It wasn't that he decided that, okay, Jesus Christ is right and I'm just completely wrong. He said, you know what? There are a lot of signs and miracles that I just don't have the ability to do. I want to go learn how to do that too. So his purpose was one for selfish gain. One to, to boost his popularity because he sees all the people flocking to to Philip, to become saved, and, and they're running to be baptized in the name of Jesus. And he's like, wow, what is this Jesus? I want to get part of this too. I want to get part of doing all these things that everybody else is doing. I don't have a cause. I don't have a purpose. I'm just doing it for myself. Just imagine the number of people you can get more with a purpose, with a cause, with a Jesus. I don't even have to, I could just say Jesus and people just come flocking to me. And people will, and I can do all these miracles and signs, and people will just, wow, just be enraptured with me. And, and Simon, he, he has this thought process, and it's going through his mind, and he's so trapped into it. He's so wandered by it. He's so entrapped. He's entrapped. He's entrapped. We can get entrapped in the kingdom of God. We can get entrapped by the, the, the possibility of, hey, one day I may be able to be somebody great and somebody's going to see me on TV. Because I guarantee there are people in this world that know some of the pastors and the preachers that speak on TV and yet they've never entered to a church. Before. Simply because people are on television. Because simply people have got to a level of celebrity. They've been elevated to this point where now they are, they are just like the Snoop Dogs and the Puff Daddies of the world where people just, <coughs> excuse me, people see them just as, as, as readily, just as, as wealthy, as, as successful, 
as any of the other individuals out there that are doing all these things. There are people that are going to be make, trying to make it in the music business and are going to decide